Welcome to Hovercraft Physics and Chemistry. This video will present some tips and tricks for recording videos to be used in the Vernier Video Analysis app. One of the first things you want to consider is your slow-mo frame rate. I do recommend choosing the slow motion option on your phone. I'll show you on iPhone some optimal settings that will help you get good results. You first want to go to your settings app and locate the camera settings. Select the camera settings right here. Then you're going to want to check the setting right here. Depending on what model phone you have, you might have different settings in mind. I recommend choosing the lowest frame rate and the lowest resolution possible. This will keep your video files smaller and more manageable. Next, record your video. It's really important that you use a tripod or some other method to fix the camera. There cannot be any panning or moving of the camera in the video. I have to admit, I could have done a better job of making sure that my camera was level to the ground. There might also just be a bit of distortion in this video. Another important consideration is to include some sort of length reference in the video. Here, I've included a carpenter's level that I know to be 4 feet long. You could also use a meter stick if that's available. It's a good idea to use something with some high contrast color because you'll need to trace out the length of this item when you do the video analysis. The length reference item is used to scale the video and will affect all of your measurements. The length reference does not necessarily have to be placed vertical or horizontal in the video. It is important that whatever object you're tracking is the same distance from the camera as your length reference. If your length reference item is closer to the camera, it will appear bigger, and if it's further away from the camera, it will appear smaller. Both of these will affect the measurements. When you record your video, I would make sure that you hit record well before capturing the motion that you're interested in, and also letting it run after the motion is captured. You can always go back in and trim the video if needed. I'll show you how to do that next. You'll see here that I recorded a lot of extra video. The camera's running and I'm off screen. I'll come into the frame and it's already in slow-mo. And of course I drop the ball. It's still in slow motion. And then I walk over and stop the video. To edit the video, just touch edit in the upper right corner. The screen will change a bit. And you'll have yellow handles that you can drag to trim the movie at the beginning and end of the clip. You simply want to move those handles so that you delete any video that's not really necessary for the analysis. You can do the same at the end of the video. When you're satisfied with your trim points, click Done. Then you have some options. If you click Save Video, it'll overwrite the original file. I always think it's a good idea to save it as a new clip just in case you need to go back to that original file for any reason. My next recommendation is to trim the slow motion duration in the video. This isn't absolutely necessary, but it's important that the motion that you're trying to analyze is included in the slow motion part of the clip. Again, you'll want to go ahead and touch edit in the upper right corner. Remember, we trimmed the entire video using the handles right here. We'll use the handles down below to alter how much of the video clip is presented in slow motion. I can click and drag the handle on the left and right. to include just the motion that I'm interested in the slow motion part of the video. Notice below, you can see that it's picked out a certain portion of the entire video to present in slow motion. The last step is to move this video file to the device that you're using to analyze the clip. You use the share button down here in the lower left corner to do that. When you click on the share button, you'll have lots of different options. Here's what it looks like when you touch the share button. You'll have available apps that you can scroll through, and some settings below. I analyzed the clip on my Chromebook, so I had a couple of options. 
I could have emailed the clip to my Gmail account and then saved it to my Chromebook or Google Drive, or if you have the Google Drive app installed on your phone, you can share it directly to Google Drive. If you follow these recommendations, you'll be able to create some high quality videos to analyze in the Video Analysis app. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you'd subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching.